Hi there, I'm Liesl van der Westhuizen. And I'm Nicole Biondi. And welcome to The Next 48 Hours. The Next 48 Hours is a new TV show right here on CTV on DSTV. Every week we're going to be bringing you an amazing lineup on what's happening, what not to miss, what's going on in Cape Town. And we're going to be interviewing some of Cape Town's finest people and getting to meet some of the locals. Absolutely, but for this week, we are going to be focusing predominantly on food. Ooh, our favorite topic. Absolutely. Let me get the ball rolling. Okay. Liesl, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is your favorite food market? Ooh, my favorite food market would have to be in Cape Town, mm -hmm. would have to be Hope Street Market, City Ball Market, or Palms Market, or one okay sorry one market thank you <laughs> yes okay and you thank you definitely the Burkhop market have you been no i've never been before okay so the Burkhop cultural market mm -hmm. happens on the first and last saturday of every month between 9 a.m and 2 a.m as the name suggests in the Burkhop in rose street they have an amazing selection of cape malay foods so think um, ruti and curry Ooh. Dal cheese, Ooh. samosas, and my personal favorite, heads or heaps. Mm -hmm. And of course, our team from the next 48 hours was there to capture it all on camera. Let's take a look at what went down. Workout Market. It was started by a non-profit organization. Uh, we're a committee of women who run an organization called the Workout Cultural and Heritage Gateway. Uh, then there was a need in our community for people to come out to an, a, a platform where they could sell uh, wares, skills that they had in their homes like sewing, cooking, crafts, to be able to sell it to the tourism market and we realized in Boerkamp we have that market but we needed to actually provide the products for people to buy. So at this market we have various things being sold, food is the big speciality and attraction. We have crafts, we have uh, spices, um, lots of uh, clothing as well. And part of the market is having an exhibition like this up on the wall here, where we have a, a, a rites of passage of the community, where people, um, there's, a, uh, there's an exhibition that talks about from the baby, when the baby is born, like the dupma, right to when a person is married, the wedding, right to death. And that is organized by one of our uh, women in the com community who is passionate about the history of the community and the traditions of the community. In fact, she started with this exhibition in her little front room in her lounge as a kind of a house museum. And today are the paints from Buka, Paul and Greg here. Um, I have an offer which is very unique. You don't get them in any other places which I make myself with love and compassion. The product that I sell is natural, organic, healthy delicacies. And it's mostly the spreads that you can use for foods and any types of dishes you can use them for. Are they very nutritional? It has been approved by the SABS as well. So there are no preservatives in and it's organic and very healthy to eat. The mission statement of our organization is to create uh, empowerment amongst the women and youth of our area, but more importantly is to create financial sustainability for people. So we have projects running in our area like homestays, cooking classes, tours, we even feed people in our area, needy people, and we run two clothing projects, uh, distribution projects a year. Okay, you guys are probably wondering what a head sohi is all about. Uh, this is the traditional head sohi, and um, it is, I actually make the head sohi and it's been handed down from generations in my family, but there's a story that goes behind the head sohi. The head sohi is a, was an attribute to a general who was in the Cape, uh, one of the politicians who actually promised um, the community, uh, I don't know the, the full story, but uh, this is what I've been told. Um, they've actually, he's actually promised the community and made some promises to them when um, 
they were settling in the area here yeah? and then they, they actually made the head sohi in his honor and um, after some time he actually betrayed that honor of them and then they converted the head sohi to another biscuit which was called the Twege Frit Cookie, the two-faced cake. So they took the, the same shape of the head sohi and they just covered it with two different colors of icing on top of it, a chocolate icing and a pink icing to indicate that they've actually been betrayed by General Herzog. So it was actually named after him this biscuit. World holding on on Good FM Breakfast with uh, Tessa B and ahead of that Usher, Rick Ross and uh, Le Messi. It's great to be with you this Friday morning. Thank you so much for choosing us. And just a reminder that the campus, the DJ camp, the campus of the DJ. <laughs> yeah, I did that so on purpose for you. Whatever. No, I did it so on purpose. This is the Good FM Breakfast team and I'm Guy McDonald and you are watching 48 Hours TV. Welcome back to the next 48 hours. Now joining us on the couch this week is a man who you shouldn't judge by his height. He started out as an MC to make pocket money while he was studying and he's gone on to be a TV, radio presenter, comedian and achieved much success with everything you've been doing. Colway, Steve, welcome. What an intro. I feel so like special right now. Thank you so much. It's a good thing we didn't ask you to stand up. Uh, no, no, don't ask me. It's fine. I like sitting down, especially next to you. Yes. Let's get the interview underway. Okay. How tall are you? I am 1.53 <laughs> centimeters. No, 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 we were joking That's about fine. that. Is it fine? Yes. You don't have an issue with your height? Hell no. Why would I have an issue? The great thing is that I know for a fact that back in the day when they created man and woman, they made women a lot shorter. And the problem was that women, they had to tippy toe to get a kiss from a guy. Now things have changed. Suddenly there was a balance in the universe and now I tippy toe to kiss women. It's beautiful. Oh, do that for us, please. Um, uh, no. Maybe later. Okay, <clears throat> we'll do it during the outro. <laughs> Carl, you're doing so many things. You're, you're presenting a variety of TV shows. You're on Good Hope FM Breakfast with Guy McDonald. Where do you find time to juggle everything? It's kind of not a juggling thing. It's more like just following a lot of passions at once. And I think that, you know, if you do follow your passion, that success will follow you type of thing, like the advert. But I just feel like there's, there, there are great opportunities all over the place in your day. And because I work for the first three hours of the day, six to nine, on Good Up FM Breakfast, it allows me to use the rest of the day to follow some other things. So I'm also a creative writer. I write ads and, and create concepts for people that want to be on radio. Um, when it comes to doing the whole presenting thing onto TV, there are some great opportunities that have jumped up here and there. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'm actually lucky in a way that everything falls into place. There's no clashes in my diary as yet. Now you're a typical Cape Tonian. You're up super early. Good Up FM breakfast broadcaster all over the Cape. What is a typical day like for you? Getting up early, do you, you don't have to get stuck in traffic. Wow. Do you end at nine and then you're done when it comes to the breakfast show? Um, well, actually not. I mean, my day starts with beep, 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 beep. And it's like, hey, okay, just please. I just need to say, please, just leave me five, five more minutes, five more hours, more like it. Mm -hmm. But getting up, it's kind of, it's great because I really love radio. And working with uh, the likes of Guy McDonald and um, Kim Clutter and Siba Piwa Matiyela and uh, Quentin Pavitt, those guys, that their names are in lights for me because I wake up with people that are as energetic as I am when it comes to radio. And that's why it's so easy because you hit 5.30 a.m. you get to studio and already you're starting to make some jokes with Guy and you're getting the whole sort of chemistry going and I think that kind of keeps you awake. 9 a.m. comes and you just there's not even a lull there's no sort of like oh radio's over what next. There's new challenges because you're thinking about the next show so we have a, a post show meeting where we discuss content and what you know what we should do what we shouldn't do what we can do what we can't do but it's great because there's just a little pool of, of ideas and a pool of talent that we can just resource to get that energy for the rest of the day. Thereafter, there are some people that'll be like, oh, call, I need a promo. And then I'll be like, okay, cool, no problem. The show you do, did it, and I'll write a promo and think outside the box as many as, uh, you know, as, as often as I can. Um, I don't like thinking outside the box when they're playing the Wallabies because <laughs> it's really important to stay with the box in mm. that moment. Mm. But the rest of the time, I think outside the box. And in that way, that's how the day goes, just ideas and content and just 
real the, the happiness of being in the industry that kind of drives me all the way through now talking about the spring box any predictions for the new zealand game this weekend well i, I do believe that the the box they will be you know They'll be, they'll be fielding a great team, I can tell you that much. I mean, they've got a great um, pool of talent and experience and that sort of thing, and especially when you're playing um, at Newlands, etc. So, like, for you now, mean I Ellis Park? They're my, playing Ellis Park? Oh, we're playing Ellis Park? Mm -hmm. My word. I just have to keep up with the times here. But anyway, um, New Zealand, All Bl I know we, we lost to them back in the season, mm. so I feel that this is a very critical encounter. We've got home ground advantage. We have a stadium rich in heritage, rich in culture. It is now time to step up. And I think they can do that. Well, talking about rich in culture, rich in heritage, I want to find out your knowledge about Cape Town. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to fire, so I count how many questions, six questions to you. You've got to answer them as quickly as possible. Okay, fine. In Cape Town, man. Cape Town, Cape Town. Yeah, why it's by Okay, there we go. Let's do it. Favorite restaurant in Cape Town? Ooh, you see, you got me like right there. Five flies. Favorite summer cocktail spot or sundowner spot? Oh, wow. Um, Premi, any one of them. Favorite food market in Cape Town? v &A Waterfront Food Market. Favorite wine farm? Wow, Niederberg. Favorite Cape Town chef? Shoo! Um, uh, Luke Dale Roberts. Favorite place to buy a Gatsby? Um, it's Golden Dish. No, oh, no, no, no. yeah, oh, that dish. is the I best place. The original place of a Gatsby. <laughs> and how do you like your Gatsby? Uh, Gatsby's got to be refined. I like the chips in place. Okay, they, they may be a chip mm -hmm. or two out of place, but make sure that it's nicely sorted. I think what many Gatsby places where they get it wrong is when they just pluck the sauce on the roll itself. I don't want the sauce on the roll. It's going to absorb and make I it know. soggy. I know. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that there should be an innovation where more Gatsby places should toast their buns. Okay, there needs to be a lot more bun toasting out there. Either way, I like the sauce on the contents of the Gatsby. That's got to have a little bit of chips, a little bit of steak. And I know people go, eh, but egg is okay. Egg is fine. Uh, to, for egg example, there's a place <laughs> like Golden Dish that creates this beautiful Full House Gatsby that has got a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of spiciness, a great balance of flavors. And that bun that it's in, it's always fresh and crispy. And that's what I like about a Gatsby. And more importantly, it's who you share it with that counts. And as long as I get a middle piece, I'm very happy. You like to be in the middle. Oh, yes, I do. Well, I tell you what, why don't you link us to our next feature? It was really great chatting to you. It's just lovely chatting to you and uh, lovely sitting down as well. Well, this next feature is going to blow your mind. This is the next 48 hours, and I can tell you that if you don't stay tuned, something may happen. There could be something bad that could happen. I'm, I'm just saying, there could be something bad. So rather stay with the good luck and stick around, because this is not to be missed. Next 48 hours. Let's go for it. And of course, we sent the team out around Cape Town to do something that we like to call the Gatsby Crawl. Finding the best Gatsby spot in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Mariams because it's the best. Anissa's in Athlone as one of the favorite Gatsby venues to actually have Gatsby. I must admit that Solid State Gatsby's are one of the best in town. Um, all of my friends and I enjoy coming through to this venue because it's quite convenient, it's easy and the food is very yummy as well. So one of the reasons why I really enjoy Anissa's Gatsby's is it's extremely spicy, it's, it's chips are tender, succulent, soft in the center, the meat is well done, the rolls are extremely fresh and it's absolutely divine, it's out of this world. Hey, it's Stan from Good uh, The show's called Lunch on Mars. We're on the air Monday to Friday, 12 to 3 p.m. Fridays, we do Gatsby Friday. So every Friday, we have Gatsby's. What a lot of people don't know is that we have the Gatsby's while we're actually on air. So it's not a radio stint per se that we're pulling, but legitimately you can see while we do the show, an on air setup, we're having a Gatsby. Welcome back to the next 48 hours. So, Nicole, I know you love food. What is one of your favorite takeouts in Cape Town or fast foods? Hmm, okay, let me think about this. Actually, don't need to think about this. I love Gatsby's. Gatsby's? I said it. I love Gatsby's. Okay, but you have another name for it as well. Okay, Liesl, you're forcing <laughs> me to say this. So, I grew up in an area called Retreat, and in Retreat, we didn't say Gatsby's, we said Gatsby's. <laughs> and I grew up in Pretoria, and we just knew Bravos on a roll. So, when I moved to Cape Town, the first meal I had from a place called Golden Dish was a Gatsby. But what kind of Gatsby? Steak 
with chips, mm, lots of sauce. So good. I'm admitting one of my Cape Townian weaknesses. Was the egg on the Gatsby? No, there was no egg on the Gatsby, but I liked it just like that. And I, I found that a lot of youngsters that I'm meeting these days that have moved to Cape Town also enjoy a Gatsby. Okay, so I have to tell you, so mm -hmm. I was chatting to my hairdresser mm -hmm. earlier, and I asked her, you know, where's your favorite Gatsby spot? And she said it's a place called Fast and the Furious, which sounded quite exciting. Yes, it does. Gatsville. And then I said, okay, but what type of Gatsby? Chicken mayo. Never heard of a chicken mayo. Chicken mayo Gatsby. I mean, what is that about? Well, you know what? Each their own when it comes to Gatsby. We want to know from you, what is your favorite type of Gatsby and where is the best spot to buy a Gatsby, whether it's in Cape Town or anywhere in South Africa. You're welcome to tweet us at 48 Hours TV or our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash 48 Hours TV. Even if you're in Pretoria, you can still tell us. So if you want to know what's happening in Cape Town over the next 48 hours, why not get out your calendar and take a look at our What's On. Black's Only Comedy is taking place at the Grand Arena at Grand West Casino on the 4th of October. You don't want to miss this. It's going to be side-splitting comedy with some of South Africa's best comedians. David Cowles on the bill, KG, Tapelo Tip Shampoo, Tumi Maraka, Conrad Koch, Jason Goliath, Mark Lottering and many more. The show starts at 8 p.m. and tickets are available at CompuTicket. Now if you are craving adventures on the high sea, set a sail aboard the Jolly Roger and enjoy the live pirate show out at sea. Children will love the authentic looking pirate ship and the sense of adventure that the crew helped to create. Daily cruises cost 100 Rand for adults and 50 Rand for children. Mm -hmm. Opening times are subject to weather conditions and you just need to go down to the VNA Waterfront Harbour in Cape Town to find out more. The Book Lounge for younger children between 3 and 8 years. There's adventures of a different kind every Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Book Lounge. The exciting stories will take them along for different journeys each week. It's a great way to get them excited about reading and exploring wonderful worlds of books. Don't miss out on the Book Lounge Saturdays at 11. It's 71 Rulon Street and it doesn't cost a cent. We'd really love to hear from you as to what you'd like to see happening on the next 48 hours. It's so simple. Just let us know via Twitter at 48 hours TV or facebook.com forward slash 48 hours TV. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, keep your eyes on our social networks to see what great weekly competitions we're running. And we'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye. Ciao.